أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان العين الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين My elders, my brothers, مؤمنين المؤمنات سلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته We are once again coming together on the 11th day of ماه مبارك رمضان to discuss the short duas blessed or given to us as a blessing by the Aima salam and we have completed the first ashra the first 10 days of Mahi Mubarak Ramadan inshallah we have been successful and now we enter the second 10 ashra or the second ashra rather and in the second ashra we are now gearing ourselves towards the ultimate the peak we are reaching towards the apex which is the whole purpose of the holy month of Mahi Mubarak Ramadan at this stage one must reflect have I done enough preparation as I go forward and do I still have time to make changes that make my Mahi Ramadan this year better than the ones of previous years a question that should continuously be arising in our minds is are these fasts of mine taking me towards the goal that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed for me ear in ear out I have been fasting and observing these fasts what changes do I find in myself when it comes to the end of my Mubarak Ramadan is there a change in me from the year before and now is there change that I can bring within myself between now and inshallah the next Mahi Ramadan? I do not even know if I'm going to cross through this Mahi Mubarak Ramadan. So we need to ask these questions and we need to decide whether we are going in the right direction or not. One of the concepts or the Furu Ad-Din is Adl Ilahi, the justice of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we must understand here that when it comes to the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when it comes to this test of ours in this worldly life, it is all the same whether you're rich or poor, strong or weak, whether you're able to or disabled, whether you're well or sick, the test remains the same for all. In the justice of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is not possible that a test is placed in front of people and some have an upper hand and others do not. That is not justice. The test that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed is equal to all. So it doesn't matter what your status is, what family you are born in, what background you come from, what your educational background is, we are all in this test together. Some have been given more tools, others have been given less in terms of worldly possessions. But within the ambit of what we've been given, each one of us is meant to fulfill a particular role. We look at the dua for the 11th day, insha'Allah, which begins with Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Allahumma habib ilayya fihi ihsan. Oh Allah. I have come so far and now I seek from you to create in me the love to do good, to be a good person, to look forward to doing goodness. Now this is why the preamble of Adl Ilahi, goodness is not restricted only to the person who has the ability to do good. In fact, every one of us, every creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has the ability to do good. We sometimes argue that it's very easy for a rich person to keep doing good towards others. Perhaps it's because of the concept of good that we have in our mind. Good has got nothing, has no relativity to wealth, power, status or position. Goodness is that trait that even the most lowly of the people in the food chain as we human beings like being like grading is able to do i'll give you a simple example 
as you're going down the street, whether it's on your car, in your car or on a bike, or you're walking, or you may be on a public transport, and on the side of the road you see somebody who has fallen down. Many a time you will find that even the richest of the rich, who is driving the biggest of the biggest cars, does not stop to help that person who has fallen down. It is very possible that the person on the ground is either the president of a country, or one of the top ministers, or one of the wealthiest tajir in the country. But because the person is fallen on the ground, and nobody knows why he's fallen on the ground, he may have been mugged, hijacked, what have you. But many people, even those with the possessions to help, they may be that person's best friends in the worldly life, but they do not stop to help. Goodness is the trait to stop whatever you are doing, at whatever place and time you may be, and doing something selflessly, without thinking of yourself first for somebody else's benefit. Goodness is that action that one takes where he, has, he or she has a choice between self and the other person. That is why it's not surprising that one of the most revered institutions of the religion of Islam is marriage. You may ask, where does marriage come in goodness? I'll give you a short story as an example. We are in the time of a pandemic. There's shortages at times of foodstuff. We've seen it in the West. People cleaning out shelves in the shop stores. There's a short story that says there was a time when there was famine in one town. And the scholar of that town, when he had gathered everybody for evening prayer, and he was extolling the benefits of being good, of helping out those who do not have in the time of need. And as he was listing the benefits, there was one believer, a very nice person, probably like yourselves, who felt in his heart that I need to do something. And he realized that in his house he has a whole bag full of grain, whereas most of the town did not have any grain. So he comes outside, and as he's going home, he tells his friends, tomorrow, make sure you're in the mosque. I am going to bring some grain and distribute amongst all my friends. And the scholar looks at him and smiles and says, Be careful that shaitan does not sway you. This is the test that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed for us. There is hikmah that he has given shaitan a chance to become part of our test. So this man goes home. And he tells his wife, tomorrow I'll take this grain and give it away. I'll keep some for ourselves and the rest I'm going to give it away. Next day as he's about to take the grain away, the wife says, think about it again. If you give this away a few days later, we may not have any grain and our children may starve. Do you want to feed the children of the nation today to make yours starve tomorrow? So the man hesitates and goes to the mosque without anything. And when he gets there, he's asked, where is the grain? Everybody was eager to get this grain. And he says, I'll bring it tomorrow. And as you can well understand that tomorrow does not come. After a few days, the sheikh asks him, my friend, you had a good intention. What happened to that bag of grain? And this man says, you warned me about shaitan, but you did not tell me that the mother of shaitan lives with me. The moral of the story is many a time we are at a crossroad, we have a split second to make the choice whether to help or not, whether to do something to please somebody or not, to take care of somebody or not. This is not about pleasing them for the sake of them returning the favor, remember this. This is when you do not expect anything at all except for the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You are only doing it for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And at that time, you miss that chance, the split second that it takes you to think somebody else takes a chance. That could be your house in paradise. The next verse goes on to say, Oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, help me stay away from those things that are wicked, that are bad, 
and those things that create your disobedience. The balance between doing good and evil is a very delicate balance. We live in a global society. We live in societies. We live amongst people. And different people react differently to different situations. So many times, so many times, it happens that the ones around us are not on the same bandwidth, are not at the same level as ourselves. It is so easy to become vengeful, to become upset. It is so easy that our ego gets hurt by the actions of others. It happens day in, day out. At times it is a stranger, you're driving along or you're walking along and somebody cuts your path and it sets you off and you're upset with that person or those people and your whole day is spent in plotting and planning how you would like to get hold of that person and take your revenge. At times it's those who are with us and close to us. It could be our own parents, it could be our children, it could be our spouses, it could be community members. Knowingly or unknowingly, there are indeed some people who deliberately go out of their way to make others' lives miserable. At this stage, one needs to sit back. It's a very difficult act. It indeed is very difficult. But one needs to sit back and ask oneself, why are these people doing what they're doing? Somebody with shaur, with wisdom, with hikmah, with the right mind frame, with, mental, with a good mind, somebody who is not stupid, for want of a better word. And yet this person keeps on trying to put you down, put thorns on your way. What is their purpose? When you really dissect the situation, you realize that there are those who cannot bear to see others doing well. That's the bottom line. And this wellness does, has nothing to do with worldly status or position. There may be indeed those people who in the worldly scheme of things are higher than yourself. But they cannot see you achieve success after success. And the success we are talking about is where they keep seeing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is your guide. You need to ask yourself, does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala love me so much? that every time people put obstacles in my path and I smile and cross those obstacles, it is He indeed who is behind me helping me cross those obstacles. And many a time this is what is the bone of contention. That jealousy, that feeling of inferiority even amongst those who are more superior than yourselves. It has nothing to do with status. They just cannot see you happy. And you need to rise above that and that's why you're asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Oh Allah, on this day I ask you to help me perfect this art of refraining myself from these vengeful thoughts and these wicked acts that I end up doing. Because sometimes in that rage and in, in that anger, one word spoken or one action done may end up destroying all the good that we have done our lifetime long and may destroy that paradise that we have built for ourselves. So today we are asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make good good to ourselves and make evil indeed a very ugly thing and for us to see the reality of the evil that can come out of our rage and anger. And the third line we say وَحَرَّمْ عَلَيَّ فِيهِ سَخَتَ وَالْنَيْرَانِ O oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala If you can help me achieve this balance between being good and restraining myself when I feel like doing something bad and something that you are displeased with. Oh Allah, that may help me from exposing myself to your anger and the fire of hell. The whole purpose of Mahi Mubarak Ramadan is to ensure that we get Jannah. There is a daily dua that we recite, Ya Ali, Ya Azim. And that in that dua, we keep telling Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, save my throat from that fire. Is that fire just in the day of Qiyamah? Is that a fire that is there raging for us and for those people who have committed atrocities and sins and made mistakes to be purged on that day? No. If you look at the reality of Jannah and Jahannam, 
It is a misconception that we are waiting to reach it. The reality of Jannah and Jahannam is your now. Even as we live and we breathe in this material plane, we are either in Jannah or Jahannam. You can either be enjoying this journey of life and be smiling and happy and content in the situation you're in, or you could be burning, and this could apply to anybody, with status <clears throat> or without status. You find somebody who's got everything of this material world that a person can actually try and even envision. And yet this person within themselves is not happy, is burning with rage. It's the fire of hell that's engulfing that person in this lifetime. They are just not satisfied. The food that they're eating is not tayyib and tahir. The people they are surrounded with are not those people who will be companions of the good. And yet you find a person like Bahalul. You find a person like a poor beggar on the street who on the apparent looks very unhappy or looks unfulfilled as far as the worldly gains are concerned. But this person is well satisfied with a small place to sleep and a small morsel to eat and does not have to worry about waking up tomorrow a pauper or having lost all his companions and friends because he did not have anybody except Allah to begin with. And indeed Allah is the best of companions. What more does one want when Imam Hussain says on the plains of Arafah, O oh Lord of mine, what has that person gained who has gained everything but you? And what has that person really lost who has lost everything but has gained you? Our true treasure is in the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we're asking in the third verse, O oh Allah, save me from those things that earn your wrath. I want you as my companion. I don't want anything else. Nothing else should matter. I'm going to be happy and content as you've placed me. And may I reach you happy and content as you've placed me. And in the last verse we say, بِعَوْنِكَ يَا غِيَاثَ الْمُسْتَغِثِينَ Help me, aid me, O my Lord, for you are the best of aids of those who seek aid. I need to identify the purpose of my life. It is on this day that I need to realize that my, real, my, real, my reality was a small clot of najasa and the end is a lump of clay that will be najis. Nothing in between matters. Where I'm going, nothing of this world departs with me. Everything remains behind. I need to make sure that my life is one of total fulfillment. وَآكِرُنُ الدَّوَانَ عَنِ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ سُورَ مُبَارَكَةُ الْفَاتِحَةِ